situation. So it was a much improved and much more determined performance. But before getting into the game, let's look at the lineups. Portugal started with a back four, like many of us wanted Germany to start with. And uh, they went with Rui Patricio in goal, our friend uh, Semedo in the back four alongside Pepe, Ruben Diaz, and Rafa Guerrero. They went with uh, Pereira and Carvalho in their double pivot with Bernardo Silva, Bruno Fernandes, and Diego Jata. They're attacking three behind Ronaldo. Germany went with the exact same lineup as their first game against France. Joachim Love is a stubborn man. We know that. But at least Thomas Muller was in the team, which, which would turn out to be great. But more on that later. So just to recap, Manuel Neuer in goal, Tony Rudiger, Mats Hummels, Matthias Ginter, the back three, Robin Gosens, Tony Kroos, Ilke Gundogan, that he's blessed undeniably with speed he didn't really do much of a note in the first game at least for me i just felt like he really struggled to create anything of note against france despite the fact that we know france's defense is of high quality um we have luca hernandez and benjamin Pava in bayern so we watch them on a regular basis but even then it was quite disheartening and plus, Gosens might have gotten suspended uh, for this game because of a penalty box incident in the first game, but UEFA did not look further into that matter. So, moving forward, and I thought this might happen, Germany's back three looked really open. And they were really not blessed with speed, considering we're talking about Tony Rudiger, Mats Hummels, and Matthias Ginter. Now, they're all three very good defenders in their own right. Hummels is a ball-playing defender on top of that. And Ginter is much more solid than people give him credit for. Credit for. Yeah, Borussia Mönchengladbach had a really leaky back line this season. But I really think Matthias Ginter deserves more credit than he is given. And that's why Barcelona are looking for him. Although, judging by Barcelona's recent transfers, one cannot say that just because Barcelona is looking into a player, he is of the gold standard. So, as would happen... Um, Yoclosa holds the record for the highest number of World Cup and uh, Euro goals together, which is 19. I mean, I barely remember Miraclosa goals in the Euros. He wasn't really a prolific scorer in the Euros. More prolific than Thomas Muller, who doesn't have a single goal in the Euros. But, you know, he just wasn't a big-time Euro guy. So, apparently Ronaldo was looking for that record and he had never scored um, against Germany. But as so would happen, Bernardo Silva would open up uh, the German back three with a ball over the top. Oh my god, this was so reminiscent of Bayern. It would miss the back three completely. There's a fall to Diego Jota. It is a script I have. I felt like I have mentioned a thousand times. I feel like I'm reading this, and by now I have this memorized, although that's not the case. Jota would set up Ronaldo unselfishly with a simple pass, and Ronaldo would tap it in for the simplest of goals that you can imagine, although part of being a striker is being in the right place at the right time. But when Ronaldo scores, tap in, the commentators seem to think that is the greatest thing in the world. So, at that point, Germany are 1-0 down, and I'm thinking to myself, that's tough luck, because they really did start the game well. But Germany has looked soft recently. This is no secret. Since the 2017 Confederations Cup Final against Chile, where a favorite of mine, Lars Stindl, scored, they haven't really looked great. So I thought, well, let's see what happens. I saw Gnabry try to switch flanks for a little bit, 15 minutes through the game. Uh, Robin Gosens took a shot from uh, midfield around the 17 minute, although I think he should have passed that ball into the box. But either way, that didn't matter because, again, Serge Gnabry undid the Portugal back line and uh, almost missed a header by shade in the 24th minute. And finally, Germany would find their goal in the 34th minute thanks to some really sharp play from the wing backs including uh, Robin Gosens. I think it was Kimmich who played the ball into the box for uh, Gosens to get to. But either way, Gosens did a wonderful job of collecting, setting up high Havertz, and Ruben Diaz put the ball in the back of the net. But to me, it seems like Diaz was taking a lot of flag because it was just one of those unavoidable situations where if he doesn't get that perfect, I don't even know like if he can really stop it going in. Havertz is getting that goal.
ist die deutsche Mannschaft jetzt. 